Do you see people noticing what's going on now? Do you see people repenting and coming to Christ because of all the stuff that's happening in the world right now? All the earthquakes are happening? You don't see that happening? Hello. I'm going to discuss real quickly here um, some things that they're kind of like a pet peeve of mine. Why do we speculate? You know, you know what we say? If we are wrong, we can make a fool of ourselves, you know? So if we are going to speculate about something, I think we should lay down the rules, you know? We should try not to uh, make your speculation into fact. And what I see regarding the tribulation and regarding the rapture is a lot of people making up a story, which is mainly their imagination and speculation. And uh, I have a little list of things over here that I'm looking at. One is, uh, and, and what I did was when I started to think, you know, there's something wrong with this pre-trib rapture, uh, you know, doctrine, theory, or whatever you want to call it. When I started to see something that wasn't right about it, what I did was I went through a list of all the, the whole story, you know, of what I believed. And I went through the scripture and said, okay, where does it say this in the scripture? Where does it say that? And I found a lot of stuff in the scripture that were the scriptures that, that, supported what I believe. I could find that. That's not the problem. The problem is those scriptures that I found, I had to make some kind of assumption based on those, okay? Uh, and so, um, you know, one of them would be, uh, you know, it says that pray that you are counted worthy to escape the things to come. Well, that kind of verse is still applicable to both a pre- and post-trib rapture because uh, most post-trib rapture beliefs, or what I believe, is that Wrath does come after Jesus comes, and after the rapture. So it's a pre-wrath view. So here's a list of some things that I would challenge you to check in the scripture, and just, you know, see see if you can find it. Seven-year tribulation, that's really hard to find. I've been looking and looking, and I after a long time, I finally came to the conclusion there's some kind of a seven-year period of time, but I'm not going to call it the tribulation, and I'll explain it in a bit here. They, then there's the Antichrist, the assumption that the Antichrist will make a peace treaty between Palestine and Israel. That is based on Daniel 9.27, yet I don't see anything in there talking about a peace treaty between Palestine and Israel. And then there's the assumption, the same kind of Daniel 9.27 thing, is that the Antichrist will make a treaty with Palestine and Israel to build the temple. That is based on speculation. Yeah, there's some reasoning behind that. Uh, well, where did the temple come from? Well, just because a temple was built and it can't be built now doesn't mean that the Antichrist has to make a deal to build it. It may just be that the Israeli government just decides that they're going to clear off that that um, that uh, temple or build another one that's near the one that you know Dome of the Rock that's there right now. Uh, and then the other one, you know, is does the tribulation actually last seven years, or is that seven year period of time just simply he shall confirm a covenant with many for seven years and that's it? You know, one week, that's it. There's no tribulation, that that happens towards the end, or it gradually increases, or it happens before it, it just gets worse. You know, when it says, these are the beginning of sorrows, it sounds like those things gradually get worse and worse. And then it gets to the point where it's so bad that it's like nobody is going to be able to survive this unless Jesus comes. You know, no flesh shall be saved. And then it says, for the sake of the elect. Well, obviously, Jesus is not going to shorten those days for the sake of the unelect, right? So he's going to shorten those days for the elect. That doesn't mean there's a pre trib rapture. It just simply means he's going to come before the world uh, gets so bad that the elect can't also, that's another example of how uh, you can still believe in post trib rapture and not think that the wrath of God is it's impossible because it's a period of wrath. You know, it doesn't say that. In the scripture, that's another assumption that this is wrath. You know, it's not necessarily wrath. It says tribulation, you know. Uh, seven-year tribulation marked by an event. What's the event that marks it? Uh, some people say that there's going to be this peace treaty to build it, build Israel, but what is it? You know, what is this event that marks it? Uh, two comings of Christ. There's assumption that there's two of them, but I only see one in Scripture. First Thessalonians 4, which is the classic uh, pre-trib rapture proof verse of the rapture, and there it says Jesus descends from heaven with a shout. He's coming in that verse. There's only one coming. So it doesn't say he's going to come and then leave and come back. I don't see anything that says Jesus ascends back into heaven and it comes back down later. That's all theoretical. So the assumption is that there's only going to be one. So it's it's the more extravagant claim that's based on speculation uh, is harder to prove. You need to have more proof of that. Otherwise, it's just rapture is a separate event from the coming of Christ. That's another assumption. There's nothing in there. All the scripture shows that the rapture happens when Christ comes. Okay, and then here's another, just a final note. Um, seeing people say, as the days of Noah, show, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes. But it says, as the days of Noah. It doesn't say, like the days of Noah. 
I mean, like the flood, you know, otherwise we should be starting to build boats, right? You know, we're not, we don't need to build boats because you see a rainbow in the sky. And because we see the rainbow in the sky, we know that we, the, the flood will not happen again. So that's not a literal, you shouldn't take that literal and say, well, it's going to be just like the flood again. And all these events that are uh, surrounding the flood are going to happen again because there's a promise it's not going to happen again. So the, what it's talking about is as the day of Noah is that everybody's going to be just continuing on as business as usual until Jesus comes. And you think, well, what about all these tribulations that's going to happen? Aren't they going to notice what's going on? Well, do you see people noticing what's going on now? Do you see people repenting and coming to Christ because of all the stuff that's happening in the world right now? All the earthquakes are happening? You don't see that happening. So there's always going to be people that are naysayers. There's going to be hail and fire and brimstone coming down. It even says in Revelations that they refuse to repent even after all that stuff happens. So people are still going to continue to persecute Christians, and the Antichrist is still going to do that. And they're still not going to believe. And when Jesus comes, they're going to be really surprised when he comes because they don't believe in him, right? If you don't believe in him, you're going to be surprised by his come. Or if you're a Christian and you're not, you know, you're falling away or backslidden or something like that, you'll be caught by surprise too. Because, again, you're not watching for the signs. You're not in the Word. You're not, you know, listening to God. God's warning you and telling you, look at the signs. Look what's going on. Be ready. Repent, you know.